Hey, it's Keith from Outlaw Speed Shop, and this is the March for Horseman build. The casting is an El Camino, and the theme is pretty pretty non-specific, just shiny paint. Um, I didn't really go crazy with this. Um, I really, aside from the paint job that's on this and the decals and everything else, um, I wasn't um, good. I wasn't gonna go crazy. I kind of like it's got the real riders on it already. And it's got a metal base because this is a premium casting. The biggest obstacle with this was the frickin' paint. Uh, horrible, 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 horrible to to remove. Um, and I made a comment about it on Instagram, and somebody says, sand it down. Well, I did. I had sanded it, scuffed it before I put it in the stripper, and the citrus strip just laughed at it. <laughs> it didn't do anything. Finally, I had to put an aircraft remover, and even that didn't take everything off. Um, so this for some reason either I was feeling especially challenged or something but it just was a pain in the ass to do so you can see right here I'm using some uh, 250 grit right here and or 280 grit and it just I don't know nothing seemed to work but anyways I wasn't gonna go crazy with this I had a lot of big builds going on and being that it was just kind of shiny paint um, I, I had an idea of what I wanted to do um, and I wanted to keep, I kind of got my inspiration from this on the wheels, um, or the tires to be more specific. It had the yellow line. Um, I just kind of wanted to follow that. So after I finally got it stripped, I sanded it three or four times with um, different grits all the way up to 2000. And I wanted to try polishing it. And I had picked up some Flitz polish, which everybody brags about, uh, probably about three months ago, and I just haven't had time to... Or the opportunity to actually polish a casting and use it <clears throat> excuse me so i figured it would be a good opportunity to to try it out on this one uh, you can see me scraping the doors and everything i'm trying to get i'm still trying to get paint off of this thing um and what's funny is even after i polished it and it looked really good um it was still visible in some spots so i i just finally i gave up and um uh, frustration got the better of me but so here i put the uh splits polish on i'm using a harder um, buffing wheel to, to put this on and, and work it in little by little and I'll I end up changing pads like twice through this whole thing and I clean it off after every pass uh, but overall I, I dig it I like the, the flitz polish I've been using the blue magic um, I've gone so far as um, semi chrome some different things to try I'm always experimenting and looking for different things but the flitz, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm sold on it. Um, I do auto detailing too, so I think I'm going to use this on more than just Hot Wheels. But it works really good. I end up polishing it like three or four times just to get the best possible finish. Because of, as you would have probably guessed, the fact that I'm polishing it, I'm definitely going with a Spectra Flame color. And I decided to go with Antifreeze because Antifreeze, the color, A, I've never painted it before. B, if you apply it in a certain way, it kind of, it has like a two-tone look to it. Instead of putting it on even, you kind of just put a light coat and then go a little heavier. It kind of fades from the outside in. So that's kind of where um, I was going for, that look. This is the finished polished. Came out pretty good. I could have gone further, but I didn't. But after you do that, to get all the residue off, I'm just using this Zep Cleaner. And you can see it looks really clean, and I've already cleaned it once. But I'm getting ready to paint. I'm going to clean it again. And you can see there's still still some some black stuff on there to, to remove. So the biggest thing is preparation on any kind of like Spectra Flame or candy paint in general. You have to really make sure what you're putting it on as far as the substrate is clean and, and neat. So that's kind of what I'm doing here is just making sure that everything is as clean as I can possibly make it before uh, soaking it with some paint. And uh, this stuff I find works pretty good. It's not um, it's not too too harsh on the casting itself, so uh, it just seems to work for me. But I'm sure there's better. And you know I, I did wash it with soap and water too, so uh, that just goes to show you that even after that you can still get some residue off. It wasn't much, but so I got my Bright Vision uh, Spectra Flame stuff, the Antifreeze. I got a hardener and um, an activator, and it's pretty. Pretty self-explanatory as far as that goes. I use the eyedroppers because it helps me control how much of the paint that I'm actually putting in. So, and each one has a specific uh, um, 
the the reducer is equal parts with the actual paint so if I put four droplets of paint I put four droplets of reducer uh, you can go less you don't even have to use the reducer on everything but I mean the paints pretty thin to begin with but I have a system and it works for me and I hate to deviate from that on certain things paint being one of those um, then I mix it up and then I think the hardener is uh, three parts to one so I just kind of roughly guess on that or four to one no it's three to one so I put like one and a half in there just to just to help it. And I always wipe the top because when you put the lid on, you'll never get it back off again if it's got any kind of residue on there. So I wanted to go a little bit further because it did seem kind of plain. And I wasn't happy with the fact that I could still see some, some dark outlines and stuff. But it actually worked out pretty decent. Um, I got a bunch of decals a while ago from uh, Flying Valiant. He has a channel here on... Uh, on YouTube and Instagram page and Facebook, all that stuff. And he had made me a bunch of decals for the speed shop. So I figured it was a good opportunity to kind of, I don't do a lot with decals. Um, to be honest with you, I hate them. Um, they're like my, my Achilles heel when it comes to builds. I just, for some reason, it's like a mental block with them. I just have a hard time. Um, but I figured I was going to uh, make this more of like a, shop truck type of thing and I know we have a shop truck build coming up for the four horsemen at the end of the year um, and I think uh, actually I think I'm the one who picked that <laughs> but um, overall I just wanted to kind of play around and I like the fact because he prints on uh, with white so that is a huge bonus for me and that's kind of kind of why I went with him on this um, I, you know the under printing the white underneath everything just makes life so much easier I know how to make decals and everything but to, I don't have the the money to buy or I have the money. I don't want to spend the money on a, on a printer in the white toner and all that stuff and the, the learning process that goes with it. So here I'm just kind of sizing up. When I did the decal sheet and, and um, designed it in Illustrator, I made a bunch of different sizes of everything. So that way um, it would kind of cover me for whatever I built. So I'm kind of hunting around for the right size to put on certain things. Um, just kind of having fun with it. You know, these, these four horsemen builds are um, designed for everybody to, to have fun and sometimes having a specific guideline to go with is is nice you, you have to work within a certain set of param <clears throat> excuse me certain set of parameters and that just works out really well sometimes for people and for the lesser channels the channels that don't have a ton of um, subscribers or anything like that or people you know this opportunity is great because it gives us a chance to to see and other people to see what you can do and that's the other reason behind this so i'm using some gun metal from games uh from game color and uh, just doing the bed i didn't do much on the interior um it looks pretty good and i liked the color i liked the black to begin with but i thought an aluminum bed would look kind of cool since the the rear end is tubbed and you would have you know more than likely used aluminum to remake the fender wells and i just kind of went with the whole the whole theme there um been trying to experiment with different paints i mean i like um citadel i use that for 90 percent of my stuff but uh, i'm trying to experiment and branch out and try different things so instead of the lead belcher that i normally use um the gun metal is is pretty close uh, maybe a little lighter in, is in comparison but they seem to flow pretty good um, I don't have to really water them down too much to to get them to to flow the way I'd like for them to go. But other than that, I mean, there's really not that much of a difference. It's just what I happen to grab at any particular time. And, uh, you know, if I always use the same thing, I'm going to get the same results. So I like to try to, to branch out and try different things. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. And I've already seen a lot of uh, builds for this uh, through Instagram and stuff. And everybody killed it. Um, it's just amazing work uh, with everybody. So it's another another reason I'm kind of glad uh, the Four Horsemen decided to open things up to everybody instead of being an inclusive thing. Um, it just gives us a chance to see what other people are doing. And hopefully, um, hopefully it raises our game. I know I kind of dropped the ball on this one. I was working on three or four really big projects. I mean, I haven't touched my skid project yet. Um, I'm hoping to get to that actually today as I'm recording this, but I'm supposed to be go looking, supposed to go look at a challenger today. Um, 
<laughs> I'm trying to not buy it, but it's getting kind of hard not to. It's a 2019 392 Scat Pack wide body, the jet black all the way around. And they said it's mine if I want it. I just have to decide. So if I'm not out doing that, I will be working on my skid project. Um, and I'm also working on a Camaro at the same time. So I overextended myself, I guess is the point. So um, the base, I left alone. Um, I did the detail on the grill and the lights and the directionals and all that stuff. Um, I liked the fact that it wasn't, you know, with these cast bases that it's not super shiny. Um, in hindsight, I probably could have used a chrome pen on it, but I kind of liked the fact that it wasn't outrageously chrome you know just had that nice finish to it so here I'm just using a, a matte black for the grill carefully trying to the other thing I always experiment with is brushes I've got so many different brushes I'm not not happy with any of them <laughs> it's just the way it works out I guess um, here I'm doing the exhaust tips um, I know there's some rosemary and company I think it is they've got some killer brushes but they're so expensive um, you know I'm just looking for a really nice fine fine tip brush that doesn't after three uses doesn't get all straggly um actually most of them are kind of straggly right out of the right out of the package so that's a little frustrating here i'm using my blood for the blood gods from citadel it's got a, it's a nice deep red so i'm using that for um the rear brake lights and uh i kind of like this over a, a silver finish it's got a nice nice pop to it um, it's not necessarily authentic um, but it's it on a scale like this it makes it pop and that's kind of what I was after so um, it's the first time I actually use this for tail lights and I, I kind of dig it so again it's all about experimenting and trying different things and you know I watch everybody else's videos and uh, I always learn new things so it's kind of the name of the game it's just trying different things and um, you know always be learning it's the, that's the name of the game and most importantly have fun you know if you can't have fun doing this and you're all stressed out then you're doing it wrong because you know this is supposed to be something after a hard day work you come home you know you shut off everything mentally and you just go downstairs or wherever you happen to work and just get lost in the 164th scale and you know just have fun and de-stress you know stress isn't going anywhere it's still there but at least uh you're off on a in your own little world so here it is with the decals on it i kind of went crazy um and now it's getting ready for my automotive clear which i absolutely love and here's the pieces parts um again that's the detailed grill and tail lights just the bed and i didn't do anything with the windscreen and the body that's essentially that so I think it came out pretty good. I mean, I've, I've done better, but I've done worse. <laughs> um, this is the build schedule. There is a Four Horsemen uh, YouTube page, so make sure you check it out. Next month is Ratty Muscle Car. Um, that was my one of my choices to do for a build, and it's the Dodge Charger with the blower on it. And I'm looking forward to that one because that's kind of my style as well. So, um, unfortunately, this week, Paul over at Diecast Graveyard got hacked and lost all his stuff. He's fighting to get it back. He sent this to everybody to see if we could actually post it on our feed, just in case his channel is not back up yet. And this is what he sent us. I think it came out good. I love, surprisingly, we're on, we seem to be on the same page as far as colors lately. <laughs> um, I got this after I finished mine. Um, he did a really killer job on this. He did the same as me. He kept the same wheels. Um, but this, the side, it's got that 80s reminiscent thing. And I dig it, especially the way it goes around to the tailgate and follows in with black. Um, he obviously clear-coated the, the bed, which is something I should have done and I didn't do. So, uh, as usual, when it came to the paint, he knocked it out of the park. He's one of those guys you got to watch and learn from because he really knows what the hell he's doing. And uh, he always sets the bar high as far as these four horsemen builds and pretty much every build that he does. So, make sure, um, you know, we'll let you know what happens once he gets settled out with his YouTube page. This is what I started with. Um, the Iron Fist. This is what I ended up with. Um, the Green Turd. <laughs> but overall, I, I dig it. It came out pretty good. Um, I've, I've had, uh, I've had better, I've had worse. 
Um, it's definitely shiny. I couldn't capture it as much. I do in some pictures here at the end. Um, I tried to shine the light. I'm horrible with, with this kind of stuff, trying to highlight certain things with the, you know, my wife's a photographer. You'd think I'd figure out this stuff or at least ask, but I'm too stubborn. So, um, at least I admit it. But overall, you know, it, I put five coats of clear on it. It really does shine. Um, again, it's, it is what it is. Um, I like the way the yellow in the wheel for the stripe or the tire, excuse me, you know, highlights the antifreeze color. If you can see, you can kind of see what I'm talking about, what I mentioned earlier about if you put things, when you do like a light tack coat, and then you, instead of putting it even, just kind of put it on like you'd normally paint, um, it, it works from light to dark as far as the edges and how far away from the edges it is. Um, you can kind of see it on the roof more, but it's definitely something that really, it's just a certain way. It kind of has like a two-tone look. And that's kind of what I was after. So um, overall, I like it. I hope you guys do too. Uh, thank you for watching. Make sure you check out the other four horsemen, and I will see you on the next one.